Georgia's official state motto is, at least we're not Florida. As if Georgia has multiple educational film libraries. Ah! Oh, that was a bit jarring. Right or wrong? I prefer so wrong it has to be right, but that's an entirely different short film. Uh, Jason Landis never got the recognition he deserved because no one in Georgia could spell his name right. Why am I so mad at Georgia? Huh. Sorry, Georgia. What, you're expecting me to narrate the whole thing? Screw you! Do it yourself! Huh? Oh, uh, <clears throat> sorry, dozed off. Warehouses! Need to have a crime committed with lots of space to film it? Try warehouses! Wow, such a powerful setup scene. I know all I need to know about limping warehouse worker. When tic tac toe goes wrong. No good, Nix! This was a nice warehouse district. And I should investigate, but I really need to pee. Come on, do it and get over with it. Come on, dopey. Let's go. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Breaking windows to feel big about ourselves in the face of socioeconomic impotence. Yeah, I don't think he's quite mastered those roller skates yet. Oh, he made a good turn, though. Nine, one. Oh, damn it, what comes next? That boy's face. Charlie Green's boy. With a gang of toughs. Be a shock to Charlie. Hard on the boy, too, if he's picked up. Maybe I didn't really see who it was. I'll just blame the local minorities. No. Not right to hide him. If he gets away this time, he'll get in worse trouble later. Yeah, you don't want to be a repeat window breaker. Besides, it's my job to turn him in. Right or wrong, the watchman has made his decision. A moral decision. Like other moral decisions, it will have an effect on other people. Make them also choose right from wrong. Every decision we make, every action we take, affects the lives of others around us. So, as you watch a chain of decisions in this film, try to see how various people decide what is right. Try to judge their decisions. The film will not judge. That's up to you. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll pick him up. Then we'll throw him down, okay. pick him up again, and throw him down. After a few more times, he'll usually start squealing. Come in, Dick Tracy! Hey, that cop's playing Ding Dong Ditch! Smoky, ma'am. Have you seen the bandit lately? Oh. Harry Green lives here. Harry in trouble? Is he in? What's he done? He hasn't done anything wrong. Not really wrong. He couldn't. Say he isn't here. Cover up. But if the police want him... Lady, could your inner something. monologue speak up a bit? Well, lady. Can't help him by hiding him. He's here. Come in. Oh, what a lovely slum. Look, Mr. Gassner. The boy your watchman saw at your warehouse has no record. He's scared silly. Suppose we arrange for the boy to replace the windows. Officer, it's one o'clock in the morning. I didn't get out of bed and come down here because of the few dollars the windows would cost. Is that the dad from Webster? That isn't important. What is important is the vandalism in this neighborhood. Warehouses. Homes, cars, stores. Banksy. And through this boy, we have a chance to get at a whole gang and break it up. But the boy won't talk. He won't tell us who the others were. And besides, he says that he didn't throw anything. But he's our only chance to get at this gang of vandals. Vandalism, the worst crime. Hold him anyway. I'll sign a complaint if necessary. Might help just to bring him to trial. All right. I'll talk to him some more, and then I'll get in touch with you. In touch with who? You, you kind of trailed off there, buddy. Good night, Mr. Kastner. Good night, Sergeant. Get him to talk. Get tough with him. Scary. Put a mustache on him, and he's a dead ringer for Charles Bronson. 
I wish I was dead. No. I need hate the cops. Turn against them. Make a regular gangster out of them. We're going more for an Otis Campbell trustee sort of thing. Come on in, Harry. Look, son, either talk to me or Dolores Umbridge. A sullen teenager? No way! Come on in. Close the door. Well, what is it? Close the door or come in? You pigs make me sick. Anything else, your majesty? You're in a spot, boy. I guess you know that. Why is he 30 feet away from the cop? Don't you want to sit down? Serious charge against you. What charge? Vandalism. Willful and malicious destruction of property. You mean... Vandalism. He just said it. Sit down, boy. Oh, I can never remember how to open this. Look, Harry. Oh, there we go. This fellow's going to sign a complaint against you. For that oversized jacket. You're not David Byrne. You won't be satisfied with simply letting you pay for the window you broke. I didn't break his window. Who did? Do you suffer from diarrhea? It'll be much easier for you if you'll help us. Tell us who was with you. Just exactly what happened. Well, it all goes back to Newton's first law. You'll get off much easier. Get off easier. Tell what happened. Squeal on the others. Well, boy, you want to talk? I prefer my inner monologue. Okay. I won't ask you again. I'm afraid it's 50 years for a first offense. There's a fellow coming over from your church. Your mother sent him. Name's Barker. You can wait over there till he gets here. Meanwhile, do some push-ups or something. Anything to fill out those shoulders. You look like Joan Crawford in Humoresque. <laughs> what is with people in giant coats in this short? Harry. Harry. Mr. Barker. Sorry it took me so long to get here. You can come home with me now. Oh, you're not really my type. Um, thanks, Sergeant. I'll bring him back in the morning. Come on, Harry. Harry, we've got a car outside gassed up and waiting to take you to Canada. Uh, they always return to the scene of the crime. Muzzletoff! Well, Harry? I didn't break any windows. But someone did. Oh, well, by that logic, Harry's going down for the kidnapping of the Lindbergh baby, the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand, and changing Coke's formula. Sit down, Harry. Oh, my God, he really did take him back to his place. That can't be legal. Want something to eat? You sure? Oh, I, um... Uh... Left a note for your father. Told him to bring his belt. When he gets home from work this morning, he'll probably stop by. I'll pre-call the ambulance. Uh, Harry, I think I know you pretty well. <clears throat> I think you really didn't break any windows. But we'll have a hard time proving that in court. Unless some of the others who were there speak up for you. Can't you see? I can't tell you who was there. It isn't right to squeal on your friends. You haven't got any right to ask me. Never ran on your friends, and always keep your mouth shut. You can sleep here tonight, Harry. I'll get a pillow and blanket. And join you. <laughs> Aren't you going to ask me any more questions? Just one. Is it right to hide a lawbreaker from justice? I still don't understand why Harry couldn't sleep at his own house. Harry's problem is far from solved. It's not the purpose of this film to solve his problem. That's up to you. Discover and apply your moral standards. Think of the decisions yet to be made, of the decisions already made. Judge them in the light of your standards. What is right and wrong? Did you agree with Harry's decisions? Would you have done the same? I'd have spent less time mugging for the camera, that's for sure. What about the night watchman? How did he decide what was right? Would you have done what he did? Don't do what Donnie don't does. What did Harry's mother do that revealed her sense of right and wrong? 
Did you agree with her? Maybe there's some other way I could pay for those windows. Would you have taken Mr. Kastner's stand? But he's sitting. Would you, in Sergeant Kelly's place, have forced Harry to talk for his own good? Suppose you were in Mr. Barker's shoes. Oh, God, no. How would you have helped Harry? How would you have decided what was right? What if you had Harry's problem? How would you work it out? It's your story now. You decide what is right. Things concluded after Harry sold the excess material on his jacket's shoulders to pay for the broken windows. He was killed two days later by his former gang still fearing he would name names. Mr. Barker continues to have young boys sleep over.